Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I wanted to go over again uh, breadboards and maybe the supplies used in breadboarding. Um, I recently came across these jumper wires that I knew I had and I, I couldn't find them. Uh, I just came across them the other day. They were all dumped in an old shoebox and I had to sift through them and uh, put them all together and because I couldn't find them I had purchased this little kit you can get these kit these kits and uh, comes with a nice little uh, container with the different lengths uh, slots that you can put the different lengths of wire in um, this is 22 gauge wire I started breadboarding with the solid 22 gauge wire that's just what I'm used to and then when I would breadboard and go point to point uh, putting the circuit together, I sort of keep them flat and bend them, sort of, uh, you know, resembles the traces on a circuit board. That's just how I started. But now you have these, um, these are solid core. You have these flexible wires, which are stranded wires. And uh, so when you go point to point, you can't bend them and have them uh, flush against the breadboard. You, you, they tend to sort of look like a bird's nest when you're finished with uh, uh, the circuit. Uh, putting it all together, but you you just have these wires. This here is a male to female and Comes all together connected in this harness and you just peel these off as you need them But they come uh, all connected And again, this is stranded wire, so it's it's you can't position it you know, and let it lie flat, doesn't have memory like the solid core wire does. I mean, when you bend it, it stays stays in that position. So you could buy 22 gauge solid core wire on your own, and they have it available in these little boxes, the different colors, and they feed through these holes, and you could, uh, you know, make the wires as you're uh, building your project and then as you build enough uh, different projects you could store the wires in these little tackle boxes you can purchase so I know I did a video a while back on breadboarding and uh, wasn't too certain uh, how straightforward my explanation was on the relationship of these holes and uh, electrical connections and uh, when I was looking through my supplies here, I came across this piece here, and I think this is left over from the Heath kit. If I can recall, the Heath kit, uh, when I put together a Heath kit that had a breadboard, you actually had to assemble the breadboard. And this is the component that's on the other side of those holes. So you have this perforated plastic with the holes in it, and then there are slots on the other side, and then this is the material. You know, it's just... Uh, two pieces of metal, the sort of spring action, and the lead of the component fits in between these fingers, if you can see that. And these come in different lengths, or the manufacturer just cuts these to the lengths that they want. So the power rails here, for, this, for instance, on this breadboard, this would be long, a longer section as opposed to these smaller sections here that you would plug your components into. So it's easy to forget, you know, when you first got into electronics, uh, things weren't too straightforward and you had difficulty understanding uh, or when you, when you went into it and you had, you know, no knowledge of electronics whatsoever. So I thought I'd look at a breadboard again. And, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Here is a 400-point breadboard. So it's like half the size of this one here. And I usually have double-sided sticky tape backing, so I'm going to peel this off and show you how this is, how this is constructed on the uh, back side here, what, what this sticky tape is covering up. So that's what it looks like. Let's zoom in on this. So 
So again, you can see here the holes on this side. And then here are those metal springs. And they just get pressed into these slots. And of course, this is the, you have this little ridge here that separates this side from this side. So when you say you plug in an IC, uh, you get to have a connection to all of its leads. So you can see why on these rows here, that's all one connection. So a leaded part just presses into these fingers here. You can see that. So this gets pressed in to that slot. Now for the power rails here, they just have a longer section of those metal fingers. So you can see here, this just goes down the full length of the breadboard. But you have to be careful because, for instance, on this breadboard here, if you had a large circuit that you were breadboarding and it didn't work, you might have found out that there's a section here of those metal fingers, but it's not one long. What they've done is they have a, a section maybe this long here and a section this long here, and you have to add the jumper here if you want to bring, say you wanted this red line here all to be your 5 volts or whatever your uh, positive voltage is and then here if this was your ground it doesn't continue all the way down so you have to make sure you put a jumper so if you had a circuit that was down here too and it wasn't getting any power it's because if you hooked up your power and you ground up here it doesn't extend all the way down there's two sections here. And that might be because you could have a section of circuit up here that's being powered by 5 volts. And maybe you have, uh, you know, a digital portion and then you have an analog portion down here that could be powered by 12 volts. So I think that's why they have this in two different sections. And the same goes for the other side here. If you want this all connected, you have to add these jumpers. So I thought you know, if you saw visually how it's constructed, you get a better idea of the electrical connections and why you plug your components in uh, the way you do on the top of these breadboards. And that goes for, again, you know, any of these size breadboards. This here is a, a 400 point, and I think this here is a, an 830 point breadboard. And then you can get more elaborate, you know, yet they take these breadboards, you have these, the uh, double-sided sticky tape, and you can go ahead and connect that to um, another prototype board that has a built-in power supply. So something like this. So here's a more elaborate prototyping board. It's got a lot more surface area. And they have keys on these breadboards so you can snap them together to get larger surface area. And this here is just, uh, they've taken a project box and they've built into it a um, plus and minus 15 volt supply and a plus five volt supply. And it's just got a lot more surface area that you can build larger circuits with. But it's all the same concept, it's the same type of breadboard with these fingers that are pressed into the back. So whether it's this, this small 400 point or one of these larger 830 or a couple of these snap together, you still build the circuits the same by taking an IC or your components and having them across that little uh, 
ridge there or a separation point a little channel whatever you want to call that so that's just a quick follow-up again uh, about the basic structure of how the breadboards are built and constructed and why you plug the wires in the way you do and the components the way you do on the breadboard so I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.